Nice. And then what we're going to do is uh, do a thing called a radio edit. So what, so the scenario here is like if we have two different um, shots of the same interview. So let's say it's like two different takes. Um, and you know, the person had a good first half of the interview, but they kind of flubbed the second half or the middle a bit. Uh, and then like the second take, you know, the first half was kind of wonky and then the last half was good. Um, that's not like this specific admit. That's not, a little, we'll, we'll have a, oh, hi, Catherine. Cool. Um, Glenn, would you mind uh, catching Catherine up to where we are? I'm so sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Sure, sure. So just a second, let me make a breakout room. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. You're not that far, uh, it's not that far behind. Sorry. So no worries about it. Um. I'm just going to play it because I haven't listened to these clips in a little while. So my brain needs a little refresher. Um, what we're trying to do, the goal is uh, we're going to preview these two different clips that have that are, you know, like two different takes. And then we're going to edit those two together so that it sounds like it's all one take. Okay. So I got to listen to it again in my head and then. Uh... Can you all hear that or. Did you did y'all hear the clip playing or no? No, no? I can only okay. hear you. Yeah. Okay, maybe I have to. Let me do this for you real quick. Mm, aha. Okay, uh, tell me if you do not, or if you do hear something. Are we doing that? Her answering that again, or can we ask her? If you can see. Did y'all hear that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh, okay, go ahead. Oh, I was going to, so I was going to mm. ask you, are we doing that, her answering that again, or can we uh, ask her? Just, uh, yeah, let's do oh, it again. Oh, okay, all right. So one of the things that look, okay, something that looks really weird when you're editing, um, if you don't do it right, well, okay, let me start that again. That sounds very negative. <laughs> um, uh, uh, okay. One of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's when you cut between two shots that are really similar. Um, like with an interview, if you have a shot of a person and you just take a sentence out. Uh, so you can cover that up with B-roll, with B-roll, or with B-roll. You can cover that up with You can cover that up with Blade, cut that. So you can cover that up with B-roll. So you can cover that up with B-roll, or you can also get an alternate shot of the interview. Nice. Let's do that one more time. And just not look, not even look at it, just see how it sounds. But it shifts just a little. So you can cover that up with B-roll. Okay, sounds natural enough. So that, what we just did, was called a radio edit uh, because we were strictly just editing for how it sounded. So that's what I want you all to do right now. Uh, go between the close-up shot and then the uh, medium shot and kind of find where, uh, where the cuts that you want to make are. I find it super handy to like, you, you might want to like change the view for this one. You might want to extend it a little bit um, and maybe bring, bring this out so that you can see a little bit better. But what I was doing was um, just kind of like watch the two clips in my head, made mental notes for content and then made a decision on like, which was the better performance. And then as I was watching, you know, one or the other clip, I was using my my in and out points, so hitting I or O on the keyboard as she was talking, because I was like anticipating that there was a break in her breath and that would be a good place for a cut. So that's what I, that's the kind of, that's like kind of how I do it. I just kind of watch the clip as it's in preview and then hit like I or O and just kind of get like a, like a rough estimate of where that cut is and then you bring it into the timeline and then you do your fine tune kind of editing for dialogue in the timeline. So go to and spend about five or eight minutes doing that.
I just have to like adjust my my screens everywhere. And like my laptop's like halfway tucked into this other screen, so I've got to like anyway. Welcome back, Catherine. Hi. Hey. Uh, so I've got all of Emily edits imported into my library and which which Emily interview to medium wide is that what I'm bringing down uh you well so let me uh I'll just I'll go over this again hold so on one sorry. no no don't be sorry okay so essentially what I just did was I watched I'm gonna favorite these before I lose it I watched both of these clips. So what we're, our, our goal for this part of the exercise is that we're going to like, let's say the scenario is we have one person who's, we have a sh one take that's like the medium shot and then the other take is the close up. Uh, and they said like the same line or very similar lines. And we're just trying to edit it so that it sounds like one coherent take. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was I previewed each clip like if you have an interview and then made like mental notes for content mm -hmm. and so I just made like a uh, just like a decision and I felt like in this uh, clip Emily interviews wide uh, the the back half of what she said was better said uh, in this particular clip so when I made that decision I just dragged that piece down okay. and then I started watching Emily interview three close up and then I was just kind of, you know, um, based off of like, I was just playing the clip. Looks really letting weird the, when you're Letting editing, the clip play. Uh, don't do it right. And then kind of anticipating like what she was saying next. Mm -hmm. And as she was approaching her phrase, I was hitting I on my keyboard to set my in point mm -hmm. until she got to the, you know, period um, that I thought would be the good, the, uh, would make the good cut. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the same thing with the, oh, I waited until she kind of finished her phrase had a natural breath and then I hit O for my out point. And then I dragged that into the timeline. Okay. And then I uh, and then I played it and then I just made sure that uh, in terms of audio wise, that it sounded like it was um, a natural phrase as opposed to me just like cramming two clips together. Okay, and so you don't have to do any special transition between those two clips? We're not doing any transitions because we're trying to make it sound like uh, it was in one phrase that she had said it in. Okay, good, yeah. all right. I'll work on it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, one of the things that look something that looks really weird when you're at shots it looks good and it looks um uh one of the things you know if i could add one more feature to zoom it would be like to mute computer sound without having to stop my screen share because then i would have been able to like keep doing this little edit without intruding on your guys's edit. Give me more features. <laughs> hey, Jessica, I just have to leave for an hour. I, I had, I think Seth emailed you about that before. Okay, I'll see you back. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. shot but it shifts just a little with b-roll or you can also get an alternate shot of the interview so we'll just spend maybe like another minute or two on that and then we'll add some b-roll
Hey, Jessica. Yes. So sorry. Uh, uh, when I'm scrubbing Emily, I cannot get any audio out of Emily, and I can't understand why. Ah, OK. Uh, um, if you look at the timeline, the upper right of the timeline, mm -hmm. there might be this little like uh, kind of audio wave icon with this vertical slash going down the middle. If you turn that on, then you should be able to hear your uh, scrubbing. Oh, I see. There we go. Thanks. No problem. Okay. Uh, the next part is, let me turn off my scrubbing sound. Um, so there's these other clips here. There's this one called Emily, let me see, hands close up one. And then there's this one called jump cut. This one called Emily edits a jump cut one. I'm just going to make this warm. Oh, wait, there we go. That's better. And adjusting this. Okay, ah, much better. Um, so what we're essentially going to do is, um, based off of what she's saying here, and this first kind of rough cut that we have, we're going to start dropping um, little pieces like any of these three, um, because these are the B-roll pieces. So did we go over what B-roll is yesterday? I don't think we did. B-roll is any kind of like inserted footage that isn't directly the subject that's talking. So the way that I think about it is like, you know, if you're watching a movie and it cuts to like a dog barking or it cuts to a clock or it cuts to a flower, the, all that is like extra footage to kind of provide the audience with more context um, with either like mood or setting. So that's what we're gonna try to do with what, what's going on here. Emily's talking about editing. She's talking about doing jump cuts. So, you know, we have these uh, three clips to choose from. So this close up of the hands, this uh, screen cap of Final Cut and then, and then Emily editing, editing over here. So what I would do is just kind of watch, uh, watch my clip here, watch my edit, and then just kind of pick which of these um, B-roll pieces uh, fit in with what she's talking about. So I think over here, she was talking about jump cuts for a second. Because you're editing for content, but it just kind of jerks because it's the same shot, but it shifts just a little with b-roll or you can also get because uh -oh. it's the same shot but it shifts just a little with b-roll okay. cut this too early a little so you can cover that up with b-roll with b-roll or you can so you can cover that up with so you can cover that up with with b-roll oh i'm gonna go back here sorry cover that up with with you can cover that up with so you can cover that up with B-roll. Ah, better. Or... Okay. So we're going to cover that up with B-roll. So you can cover that up with B-roll. That's kind of a weird cut. Uh, what I'm just going to do is click and drag this clip down here and then uh, hit B on my keyboard to switch to my blade tool, make the incision where I want it, switch my tool back to A, uh, back to the select tool by hitting A, delete the part that I don't want, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make sure that just is this easier for me to see. Probably doesn't need to be that long. And then uh, I'm going to run it a little bit back, give myself some free roll. Watch it. It just kind of jerks because it's the same shot, but it shifts just a little. So you can cover that up with B-roll, or you can also get an alternate shot of the interview. So that's maybe this piece, this clip here wasn't the best clip to use because she's talking about some, somebody um, editing. And I, and I just feel like maybe the mouse is a better clip than this. This is a little confusing. So let's say this is um, the right length that I want, you know, whatever the B-roll clip is, this is the, the, I feel like this is the right length it should be. So I'm going to swap this piece out or this clip out for another. Uh, and I'm just going to click and drag. You can hover over the clip here and you can see that it's like a little, it kind of ghosts out a little bit. Uh, you can just release your clip on there and then it should ask you uh, if you want to replace it from, uh, replace the whole thing entirely, replace it from the end, replace it from the uh, start, uh, sorry, start, end, uh, re replace with free fit to time and then uh, place an add audition. We're not using audition, but uh, 
that's a bit too long. I could like speed it up, but. Well, so you can cover that up with B-roll or you can also get an alternate shot of the interview. So you're cutting from a wide shot to a close up. And then I'm gonna drop this clip in here. From a wide shot to a close up or a medium shot to much wider. So you can actually chop up the interview and make it seamless and take different parts of it. But when you cut between... So you can cover that up with B. I think I did like this clip in here more. And then I'm just gonna move that one. Delete that one. Make it a little shorter. The same shot, but it shifts just a little. So you can cover that up with B-roll or you can also get an alternate shot of the interview. So you're cutting from a wide shot to a close up or a medium shot to much That's wider. Better. So you can actually- Maybe it's just a little longer to much wider so you can there actually chop up the interview <laughs> and make it seamless and take different parts of it but okay uh, get a little too into that but um so what what i would like you all to do is uh listen to your radio edit so listen to make sure that uh the, her dialogue sounds good and then you can pick one of these three clips to drag and drop uh, and add as your b-roll and then what we're going to do after that is uh, do some titles. So let me just go over the titles real quick. Um, you have your titles sidebar uh, located next to your music and your files. And it's uh, your titles, it's like a little T with like a little square behind it. Um, and same thing with um, effects and transitions, you can preview um, certain titles. Let me see some of these. And so I'm scrubbing here. I'm using the, you know, like using my mouse to kind of drag across and uh, previewing the transition or the animations. Text. I'm going to try to find a good, good, like, I like this one. This is like the one I usually use. The clouds. It's very obvious what's going on here. Um, so I'm going to just click and drag this. So with um, text objects, it's pretty cool. You can put them uh, in front of a video object. If I put this video, uh, if this, if I put this text in front of the video ob object, uh, the preview would play back like this. So I'm gonna do that. So that's just a, a black background. Uh, one of the things to watch. Um, but you can also place text objects on top of uh, the video clip, and it would look like this. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's when you cut between two shots that are really similar. Um, like with an interview. Um, so you just drag and drop, you find the kind of uh, transition or title that you like, you drag and drop it in either before a clip or on top of a clip. And then to edit the text, um, what I like to do is I like to move my playhead, which is this bar here with the little kind of tr triangle thing, the playhead. Make sure that it's on top of your text so that whatever you're seeing, um, it's important because whatever you're seeing in your preview window is what your playhead is on. So you want to make sure your playhead is on top of the text object. Uh, and then you can go to your inspector here and click on your text inspector, or you can click on, oh, this is a text inspector. Which one's this one called? Title inspector. Click on your text inspector and then you can adjust all of these different things. So you can adjust font size here. You can adjust the line spacing. This one's not super obvious. You can adjust the tracking. You can adjust the font itself. Um, you can also, where is it? Here it is. Oh, where's the little text box? Okay, got double click. Double click here. Uh, when you hover over the text object that's in the preview window, you'll see this like little kind of ghosty box outline. You can double click on the text and then you'll be able to start typing in here. So I'm going to highlight uh, the, the text that's in my text box, delete, and I'm going to write Emily edits. And then I'm going to um, double click on this other text object. I'm going to hit command A to select all the text in there and then hit delete. And then I'm going to call this one jump cuts and then maybe i want a jump cuts text to be a different color um i'm going to scroll down in my text inspector until i find um face 
here. I'm going to hit show and that will give me these other kind of parameters that I can mess with. So I'm going to change the color from a white to, let's see, if it's purple, let's make it green. Nice, really bright. <laughs> Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's when. And you then I'm going to add shots. a little, maybe like a little title at the end. I'll do a dramatic title. And make it seamless and take different parts. So this title, um, so there are some text animations that have like timed things. So like you know this one as it's playing, it'll say like title. And then it'll say subtitle and then it says date. Um, so this is again why you want to make sure that your playhead is on top of your text object uh, when you want to edit it because if I was here and I wanted to you know replace this word title with the actual title of the video um, you have to move the playhead onto it in the actual like timeline. So I'm going to delete this and call this one like Emily. And then scooch this, I grab the playhead and I'm scooting it over till I see subtitles, I'm double clicking on subtitles. And then selecting the subtitle text in the text box, deleting it, edits. And then I scoot it over again on the timeline with the playhead. And then I'm gonna say fall 2020. Nice. Okay. And then, ah, sorry. I'm going to roll that a little bit and play it now. You can actually chop up the interview and make it seamless and take different parts oh. of it. But when you cut between the two. So shots, I think when I was editing it, I didn't have it actually clicked. Okay. So. And then C, copy, delete, edits. Make sure that that change actually took. Okay, good. Go to dates, double click, and then fall 2020. Um, for text, usually I like to put an outline on it because it's just kind of hard to see, even, even though like everything in the color is like a contrast. I spelled fall wrong. <laughs> uh, so what I like to do is put an outline on it. So I'm just gonna uh, select that all the text and then I'm going to go down here in my text inspector and then put a little checkbox next to outline. And then I'm going to click show so that I can see different things that I can mess with. I can mess with the opacity. I can make it super blurry. I can change it from red to black, which is exactly what I'll do. Boop. And then it just makes it stand out a little bit more. So you can actually chop up the interview and make it seamless and take different parts of it. But when you cut between the two shots, it looks oh, good. Sorry. And it looks okay. Let's cut you off there. Shots, it looks good and it looks okay. It doesn't have that weird look of two shots that are almost the same put together. Nice. And then I have a little fade. Okay, great. So how about you all do that? Uh, add some B-roll to, let me go back to my media here. Add some B-roll, one of these three clips into your timeline and then open the text sidebar. Explore all the different kind of text options that you have. I would suggest you choose something that has like maybe some slight animation, like maybe this uh, field of view one, just so that you can practice like uh, moving the text object into the timeline and then uh, placing your playhead on um, the, the actual place in time that it needs to be for you to uh, like double click on the text box to then change the text. Because what can happen is like, I think that's like an easy thing that people, uh, it's easy to forget that like once you go off into the wild and start editing on your own. There's also like fun things like this text animation where it does like, this cool fold Shot and then you can add pictures in here. So you can cover that up with B-roll. So go ahead and spend some time, like five or eight minutes, uh, add your B-roll, add some text animations. Maybe if you want to throw in a fancy fade, if you really, really want to, and you're feeling super ambitious, you can go and even find a little song to throw on to Emily's interview.
five, eight minutes. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut. And Don't forget to spend some time too playing with uh, your text options. If you open your text inspector, there's all these different things that you can do. You can play with a glow. So for example, let me, I'm gonna double click on this text object here, Emily edits. I've selected the text in the text inspector and I'm going to add a nice glow to it by uh, check checking that off in the box, hitting show, and then good glow color. I'm gonna crank up that radius, make it really, really neon. Do you want, can you share screen, Emily? Oh, sorry, sorry, my bad. 
Sorry, I didn't realize that was, uh, let me do that again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me, uh, can I come in here? All right, let me just do. So I have my playhead. I'm going to move it on top of my text object. I'm going to double click on my text object. Just make sure that it's all highlighted. Uh, checking in the text inspector to make sure that's all highlighted. Scrolling down. And then uh, there's a little checkbox here next to glow. If I turn it off, then that's bypassing the effect. If I uh, have it checked, then that means it's engaged. I'm going to click show uh, to show all of the different parameters that I can change within the glow effect. Uh, this is the color. You can change the radius so you can make it like super glowy neon looking or you can just make it like, you know, just give it a little zhuzh, maybe not too much. Uh, I'm going to blur it a little bit. I might change the color. Maybe I'll just make it green. Actually, make it pink. Yeah more okay cool whoops it clicked off of it so yeah add a little glow um if you want to you can play around with adding some 3d effect to it you can add a little outline to it so make sure you just spend like a minute or so exploring all the things that the text inspector has to offer Okay, we'll just spend another about another minute and then we'll keep moving on. Jessica, I'm sorry to ask. Oh, no uh, worries. So I'm still back trying to bring the clips down into, into the project. And uh, I'm only dragging audio. I don't know why I'm not dragging video. Aha, uh -huh, because you might have this little box here. This, so there's a series of icons uh, on the upper left of your timeline. There's a little uh -huh. bar. And uh, r directly to the left of the, air, the cursor, Mm -hmm. If you click on this icon, it's, uh -huh. there's oh, like okay. three oh. options. Yeah. I, I think I was stuck from yesterday. Okay, thanks. Yes, you always have to flip it back or else it will stay stuck. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Has everyone had dinner yet? What did everybody have for dinner? Carne asada burrito. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, I could go for one of those. I could always go for one of those, honestly. I, I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> Clark, are you annotating? You're drawing all over. You're drawing all over my Final Cut project. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know what the <laughs> hell I was doing here. I was trying no, to get okay. my microphone on. I had a smoothie. A smoothie? Yeah, it sounds good. I'm I got off vegan, so I, uh, I don't do any meat products anymore. Yeah, products. yeah. I mostly mostly don't eat as much meat, but I still eat eggs and cheese and bread. Yeah, see, I did that for a while. I think last time I saw you, I just switched to uh, pescatarian. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, then I just eliminated it all together. That's good. Plant based. Not for everybody, but it works for me. Yeah. Okay, this is weird. My clouds, they wouldn't show up, but everything else does. 
your clouds show do show up? No, they don't. I tried to put it over the top and uh, it didn't work. So I put the uh, fall title in. I got, I played around with that for a while. That worked pretty good. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna stop my screen share real quick and then just start it up again. Oops, okay. Oh, someone in the chat. Who's in the chat? Said something. Hmm. Oh, no, I was just seeing things. Okay. Do you have? Does everybody have some uh, text on here and maybe played around with some uh, font color and some outlines? Cool. Okay, so I added a little sound. Uh, I just like went into the sound effects bin and I grabbed a couple sounds because I thought that it was kind of boring without having anything in the front. So I'm just gonna play my kind of like first like little rough cut. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is a jump cut and that's when you cut between two shots that are really similar. Um, like with an interview, if you have a shot of a person and you just take a sentence out uh, because you're editing for content, but it just kind of jerks because it's the same shot, but it shifts just a little. So. So immediately, like the things that bother me or jump out to me the most are that uh, the sound effects volumes were way louder than than her dialogue. Also, it the sound effects kind of ran into her dialogue and it just like, wasn't very clear. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm thinking that, you know, I need a little bit more space in the front here because I want the audio to play um, before my video comes in. Uh, when I have like a little issue like this what i like to do is i like to put like a like a little a little gap in there um so let's see you go to i always forget it's where is this one insert so you go to edit uh and then you want to go to insert generator and you can place uh put a placeholder or a gap uh, i like to put a gap in and it's essentially just like a little bl blank space that you can um have as like a little blank space Little blank spaces are nice to have if you, you know, maybe have some text and you just want something simple, a simple background. Or for the purposes of what I'm doing here, I'm using this little blank space as like a visual pad so that my audio has some time to play out in front of it. And maybe my titles too. So roll my titles back a little bit and then put my playhead all the way back to the front, hit play. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing Jump cut well, it feels better to me. The shots. audio uh, sound effects are, are still way, way overpowering the uh, dialogue. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Uh, what I'm actually going to do instead of just like turning it all down is I'm going to automate some of this audio to go down. So I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit so everybody can see. Okay. All right, team. So the chimes. One of the things pretty loud. I'm gonna turn it down. I'm just gonna like do what we did the other day, is just or yesterday, is just click and drag it uh, just right off of the region here or the clip. Uh, and then this this new way that we're gonna do it is um, kind of like some a little bit of automating. It's how you can automate audio in Final Cut. It's a little like wonky, but it works. Um, so what you do is you put keyframes down. Um, I always forget what the hotkeys are. I have to press it actually. So option. Uh, on your keyboard, if you hold down option with your mouse hovering the like adjust volume bar, it, it'll like the cursor will turn, you know, from these two little arrows pointing away from each other, it'll turn into like a little clicker cursor with like a little square right next to it. So once you have a little square, you, uh, that indicates to you that you can start placing keyframes. So let's say um, for this harp transition or this harp sound effect, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to listen to it again because I'm trying to kind of figure out where I want my, the, the ramping down or the fade out to begin. So I'm going to bring my playhead back to the front and kind of listen. Uh, one of the things oh I'm man, it's, uh, you know, like this really overwhelming. It's hard for me to distinguish between the dialogue and the chimes. So I'm actually going to mute both the tracks, um, the dialogue and the chimes, so I can just focus on the harp transition. So the, uh, the mute button on Final Cut is V on the keyboard. So I like to call it the mute button. So I just hit the V button to uh, turn the chimes off here. And you know that it's disengaged because it's got this like kind of ghosty grayed outness going on here. I'm also gonna 
mute Emily's uh, track up here so I can just solely focus on the harp. So I'm kind of going to, I'm just going to guess that uh, just by listening and then also by comparing the audio waveforms that's coming off my dialogue track here, I'm going to guess that this is where I want my uh, fade out to begin. So I'm going to hold down option, hold down option, there we go. Uh, and I'll, I'll get the little square indicating to me that I can now place keyframes. So I'm going to place a keyframe where I want my fade out to begin. And then I'm going to keep listening to figure out where I want my fade out to end. So by the time the actual, the, the harp transition, by the time it actually stops playing any sound, um, we can we can see up here like in Emily's dialogue that she's like well into her statement. So we're gonna end the the fade out much sooner than right here. I think I'm gonna put it maybe over here and then hold down my option key to drop a keyframe. And I'm gonna click on the audio bar and uh, place that keyframe. Okay, great. So now I'm like, all right, this is where I want my uh, ramp down to begin. This is where I want it to end. I'm just gonna bring this down. Oh no, why is it uh, moving the whole bar? So with Final Cut, like the way that I like to think about it is that you have to put a, you have to put a keyframe at the beginning and the end of the beginning of your fade out or your automation. And then you have to put a beginning and an end to the end of your automation. So what that means is that for every like fade in or fade out that you want, you have to put four points. So I'm gonna say that again. I'm gonna make this, man, you can all see that. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. These little things are kind of small. And I'm gonna turn that off. That's precious real estate, my screen. Okay, so, um, I placed this down here earlier because I decided this is where I want my fade out or my automation to begin. Um, I'm gonna drop another little keyframe here next to that. And then this is where I want it to end. So I'm gonna drop a little keyframe next to that. Boop. I might even actually just bring out my blade tool and kind of trim it back up over here. Cause I am, you know, ideally by the time the playhead gets to this point, it's not going to be playing any sound anyway, so that's irrelevant. I'm going to click on that, delete it, just to clean it up a bit. Um, and then I'm going to move this uh, point here, oops, actually, down like that. There you go. That's super severe. I think that's better. So let's say, actually, let's just uh, watch it everything together. So we'll mix the chimes back in. We'll mix uh, Emily's dialogue back in. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's when you cut. So I think that this actually, the, the harp still kind of plays out a little bit too long. I kind of want the uh, fade out to happen by the time it gets to here. So I'm going to drop my playhead here as a visual indicator for myself. And then I'm going to select both of these uh, fade out points by clicking and hitting sh and holding shift to select multiples. And you can see that both of these are, are selected because um, they are yellow. Now I'm just gonna scoot it over to kind of over here where I think I want my fade out to be. One of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut and that's when you cut between. Nice, it's good. I'm gonna cut my chimes here. I'm actually gonna lower this even more because it's still too, way too loud. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut. And then uh, the, the, the chimes kind of rings out, so I'm going to apply a little, a little automation to the chimes also. Oop. Watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's when you cut between... And then I'll just trim this up because uh, we don't need any of that. Things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's... Okay. Great. So, um, I just wanted to show you that you're not going to be putting these transition sounds on it yet. If you don't want to, we can do that if we have time. Um, but I wanted to show you 
uh, dropping those keyframes because the next exercise that we're going to do is that we're going to play around with editing audio. So um, all of the media that we have currently in our media bin is, um, is what we're still going to use. We're not going to import any new stuff. Um, but what we are going to do is create a new project in the existing event. So what I'm going to do is go to File, New Project, and then I'm going to na name this one Emily, Emily Interviews. And then I should see uh, a second project in my media bin. Did anybody have questions? Sorry, I kind of like just blew through that whole kind of section. Did anybody have questions about the audio here or wanted to see anything before we move on to like the hands-on audio exercise? Yeah, how do you uh, make the selection just to place the keyframes? You hold down option. All right, thank you. Yeah. And then to delete it, you have to like hold down control and then you click the keyframe and then um, then you, you know get a little bubble that says delete keyframe. So option to drop a keyframe and then control to delete a keyframe. Which we'll be playing with keyframes shortly. So uh, create your projects in your event and then name it Emily interviews. So this kind of scenario is like, you know, what if we had shot, you know, two episodes or whatever in a day and we had all the media from that day that we just like uploaded into uh, our library um, because it's all kind of the same content. So our two projects in this example could be like two episodes uh, that we have, but they are all kind of sharing similar content. So this is kind of how, this is a way that you can use uh, Final Cut's hierarchy to organize and manage your projects. Another way you could think about it is, you know, what if Emily, inter uh, sorry, what if Emily edits was like um, a documentary that we were working on about Emily the editor. Uh, and then, you know, this was like, I don't know, uh, on a January through March, Emily's projects that she was working on. And then um, we could have a bunch of projects as like, um, maybe they, those are organized as like our weekly check-ins with her. So that's kind of a way that you can kind of keep everything organized. Great. Does everybody have their uh, project named Emily interviews, but it should be sitting in the same event as your Emily edits? Okay. Okay, good. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, double click uh, Emily interviews to uh, summon it as my timeline. Okay, so this interview, or so this exercise, what we're going to do is um, splitting an audio track. So I'm just gonna play um, this clip here real quick. Name community media, if I could remember, can we start again? <laughs> Hello, my name is John Lugton from the production department here at Metro East Community Media, and I'm joined by uh, Emily Vidal, also from the production department. And um, last week, uh, we produced a show called Community Hotline, um, and Emily is the producer. Could you tell me a little bit about that show? Well, uh, last week... So what are we noticing already about this particular, the, the sound, specifically about the sound? It's really soft. Yeah. John sounds pretty clear, but Emily sounds like she's 20 feet away. <laughs> so uh, in this particular configuration or scenario, you know, I, I, it's likely that the, there's a mic, there's the, sorry, bleh, there's a camcorder that's like sitting 10 feet or 20 feet away. And that camcorder has a, an internal microphone. So it's got one already mounted on it, built into the camera. And then John here, he's holding another microphone. So that's kind of his external microphone. And he should be, as an interviewer, he should be moving it towards Emily's face. But for the purposes of this exercise, he's kind of just keeping it away from her. So what our job is as like the audio editor is um, we're going to try to find out if the onboard sound so the camera that came with, that's like sitting on the camera, if that 
audio is usable at all because sometimes, um, you know, maybe it was picking up the other guests better than John was. Uh, so we're going to have to figure out which track is the onboard microphone and which track is the external microphone. And the external microphone is the one that John's holding. So you uh, click on the, and again, resist the urge to move ahead because uh, we'll be all doing this together. Um, so you click on the clip uh, that you want to edit and then you bring up the audio inspector here, which is the uh, little speaker icon with little sound kind of waves coming out of it. And um, what you should do or what you should see is the audio configuration bars over here. Um, and it's the exact same thing with everything else with scrubbing. I didn't have my scrubbing on. I'll turn it on now. So you can scrub and listen to your uh, audio. Um, and then because I know that it was recorded on a camcorder, I'm going to split the stereo uh, track by clicking this little carrot next to stereo up here. And then I'm going to select dual mono. And now we have two different tracks here. We have three total, but we have two down here now. One is called Dialogue 1, and then the other one is called Dialogue 2. So notice uh, the one that's up here, it says Dialogue 1 and 2, because we have the uh, little check uh, checked in on both of these. If I disengage uh, this check from Dialogue 2, then we can see up here it says only Dialogue 1, and when I hit play, it is only playing uh, the track from dialogue media? one. If I could remember, can we start again? So what, I, what we're going to try to do is, um, you know, click between each of these and figure out which one is John's track and which one is Emily's track. Hello, I'm John Lufton from the production. I'm going to click that off, off, click this one on, click on that same spot because I'm just trying to figure out like uh, which one has the best clarity in sound. Oh. Beautiful. Media? So I think I, we I can safely remember, say we'll that again. dialogue one is the uh, external mic that John is holding. Great. So what we're going to do now that we've identified that that's dialogue one, and we're going to just drag and drop that clip into the timeline. And then you click the region, the clip, you uh, hold option. There's a controller option. It is control. Sorry, my bad. You uh, hold control, click the clip, and then you uh, select expand audio components. Oh, sorry. I, I did that just one step wrong because I only had um, dialogue one checked. Uh, if you want to expand your audio components so you see both tracks, you want to make sure you have dialogue one and two checked. So I'm uh, holding or clicking control, expand audio components. And now there's uh, both of these. Great, so I'm gonna play it. Okay, so looking into the lens. I'm gonna just trim all that up. When you're ready. We don't need that. Hello, I'm John Lutzen from the production department here at Metro's Community, Community Media. If I could remember, can we start again? <laughs> I'm going to trim it up. Hello, so my name is. is. John Lugton from the production department here at Metro East Community Media, and I'm joined by uh, Emily Vidal. Okay, also okay so Emily's super quiet over here. I can hear it uh, that she's quiet when I preview, uh, but you can also, also see here production. on the uh, audio waveforms that she's super, super low. Like her volume is really, really low. So, what I'm going to do is, um, and as you edit more audio, you'll be able to see it pretty easily. Um, but I'm definitely more kind of, I, like I do it visually, so I can tell that this is kind of where she starts talking. And I'm kind of picking up my playhead and dragging it around to make sure, I kind of like to, I like to put my keyframes like right when I feel like the person's about to speak, because I feel like it, um, I like to have a little bit of buffer um, when I'm doing my automation. So put a keyframe here, the beginning of uh, the automation, the end of the beginning. <laughs> and then I'm going to put another keyframe here. I see that John's moving the mic up to his face. So he's about to talk. I'm going to put my two keyframes here. So bloop and bloop. And then I'm going to bring Emily up as much as I can. So now I'm going to listen to my edit. 
give myself a little pre-roll. I'm joined by uh, Emily Vidal, also from the production department. So, you know, it and, wasn't uh, last week a whole lot better, but I think it was as best as I could do because this is already like turned up all the way. Joined by if I was really uh, on Vidal, also top of it, I'm gonna get get that little uh, out of there. Get out of there. I'm actually gonna put a little two of them over here. Boom. Yeah. Uh, Emily. Oh, you can still hear it. You can still hear uh, that, Emily, because it's coming from the uh, the other track here. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix that later. Uh, Emily. Okay. So that's what I want folks to do first, and uh, the kind of goal for this particular task is you want to go through this entire clip, and you want to find all the spots where Emily's talking, and you want to bring her volume up to. Uh, the same levels as John's. You might be thinking, oh, but if I just uh, use my ears as a gauge, you know, everybody has different hearing uh, kind of ability, um, would, is, wouldn't that vary a whole bunch? And the answer is yes, that would vary a whole bunch. So what we usually do when we edit for sound is we want to bring up our audio meter. So you can bring up your audio meter, meter by going to window, uh, show in workspace, and then you want to bring up your audio meter. And then, and then there's this little bar that pops up over here. And now you can see that when you play your clip, uh, you have this little green bar that should, um, and ideally you want it to detail. stay between negative six and negative 12, because that's just enough space to um, be loud. It's like just loud enough, just quiet enough so that it's not going to like blow out people's ears and be too overwhelming. Um, and it's, um, Yes, yeah, so you, you want to, as best as you can, try to make both of their speaking levels fall between negative 12 and negative 6. So I'm going to uh, just kind of verbally quickly go review all of that and then we'll release you to practice. So what we did is uh, we selected a clip in from our media bin. We opened our audio inspector. Uh, and this is where, of course, you can adjust all of your kind of uh, sound related things. Um, there's this kind of audio configuration section here um, and you can select uh, which dialogue or which track you're listening to. You can scrub just like we can scrub from the uh, media bin. Uh, once you kind of find this little area here, you, you want to, it'll, be, it'll look like this. It'll only have these two tracks and then it'll say stereo. You want to click on stereo, switch it to dual mono. And then you want to identify which track is John's track, so which one is the uh, clearer sounding microphone, and then which track is the external track. Uh, once you have figured that out, you drag your clip into the timeline, you control click the clip, and then you select expand audio components, which will separate those two tracks into your timeline. And then you can start uh, previewing, watching it, placing your keyframes, and uh, turning up Emily's audio as best as you can. And if uh, and like in a few minutes, I'll uh, review how we brought up the audio meter. But uh, I want everybody to get the hang of going out and checking the uh, audio inspector, uh, playing around with scrubbing in it, switching your uh, option here from stereo to dual mono, dragging your clip into the timeline. Once it's in the timeline, hold control and you expand audio components. Jessica, I'm obviously still lagging. How do you place a keyframe? Oh yeah, so you place a keyframe. Uh, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, you place a keyframe by holding down option uh, while your cursor is hovering over the volume bar. Because if you hold down option and you're not hovering over it, you're not going to get that uh, option to put a keyframe down. So you have to be hovering over the audio bar or the volume bar and then you hold down option and then you'll see like this little kind of diamond next to your cursor. Great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. And then let's say you're dropping keyframes because this part can be kind of confusing when you're first starting it and you're like, oh my gosh, I have like so many keyframes. I don't know what's what. If you want to delete them, you can uh, hold down control and then uh, while you're clicking that, uh, sorry, hold down control and then click the keyframe, it'll turn yellow and then you can delete it. 
You can also select mul you can also select multiple keyframes. So let's say I wanted to shift these over uh, to either left or the right side. Uh, you just hold shift and select as many as you want, and then you can scooch them around. Ah, thank you. No problem. I'm going to get some water and I'll be right back. I feel like maybe uh, some folks have placed a few keyframes. I wanted to um, point something out I had kind of mentioned was the audio, audio meters. So you bring up your audio meters by going to window, workspaces. Oh, burp, sorry, it's show in workspace. That's what it is. Uh, so window, show in workspace, and then you select your audio meters. And this is uh, the thing here on the side, and it has this Oh, wow. little really big bar show that will move up and down and it'll let you know and, um, like uh, better than your ears can uh, what the actual volume of your project is. And typically you uh, want your dialogue to be between negative six and negative 12. Um, so we'll give folks maybe like three or more minutes. 
Do people have any questions so far? Like rolling today. Might finish early. I'm just okay. I'm gonna be that guy. So um, I'm drawing a blank here. All this information, and I'm tired as hell. But um, I forgot how to zoom this uh, timeline so I can get it to look bigger. Oh yes, no problem, Clark. Don't don't feel like you're that guy. You're asking questions, and this is new for everybody. Uh, so yes, so you zoom in. Um, there's a little film strip icon on the top right hand side of your timeline. Okay. And if you click that, you'll be able to kind of adjust how your media looks in the timeline. And then there's like the actual like zoom in and out where you can just uh, hold down command and then tap plus or minus. Oh, okay. That's what I was doing yesterday. And let's say you're, you're like getting some real granular editing going down and you're like, oh man, I don't, I don't remember where's like the front end or the, the, uh, the front or the end. Uh, I, I really like uh, the hotkey uh, shift Z and that uh -huh. just like snaps everything back into view. Okay. All right, got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. My cat wants to leave. She's like looking at me. Open the door for me. <laughs> this coyote's puppy. Might be a good time to take maybe like a little five minute break if folks want to do that. Get a snack, get some water, pet a cat. So this class is okay, right? It's not too, it's not too weird doing this virtually. I'll take Walter's nod as a yes. <laughs>
Gotta get down with the Mac. <laughs> Good taste in music. I've been very much on a Fleetwood Mac kick lately. All right, I'll see if Catherine is back. I saw Nick Fleetwood's restaurant when I was in uh, Lahaina. Oh, what kind of restaurant is it? I, you know, I didn't look at the menu. It wasn't open when I walked by there. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. But it looked pretty cool. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna go look that up later tonight and just fantasize about restaurants and how that used, <laughs> you know, like used to be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, I like food carts too. <laughs> I don't trust those things. What? It builds constitution. Well, as a, when I was a road supervisor at TriMet, I won't tell you about what I saw crawling underneath the doors oh, at yeah. nighttime when I'd be working down there, but they were huge. Oh, yes. Were they like rat things? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. New York-sized rats. Yeah, they're kind of cute. <laughs> they're kind of, I mean, it's kind of cute how like the grease just makes makes them all, you know. <laughs> it looks real gritty. It's like pomade. It's a... Um. Okay. Like Al Sharpton. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, they are some pretty big rats. Like walking around downtown a couple times. It's like, not even like that dark, and I like bump into a trash can, and then you like hear the scurry, <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, I actually like felt those foot. I felt the vibrations of their feet. That's how big they were. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, did, does everybody have or feel confident or feel comfortable about uh, using keyframes uh, to automate some audio? To adjust? Great, because now we're going to do part two, which is slightly harder. Okay, so what I like to do is uh, create another project within this event. So I'm gonna go file new project, and then I'm gonna call this one Emily and John. And I'm gonna double click on this project to make sure my timeline here is uh, the, the, the timeline name here is the, the project that I actually wanna work on. Uh, and this time what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to edit the clip that has Emily and John both talking with microphones. So in the first configuration, we had a uh, internal microphone on a camera. Um, and we, we, we know that the internal, uh, sorry, let me get back to this project Oop, here. Okay. Um, we know that this channel, the one that's on the bottom is the internal microphone because it sounds significantly quieter than John's channel or John's microphone. So I'm going to mute John's microphone by hit, uh, selecting the audio track and hitting V. And you'll know that it's muted because it's kind of grayed out. And then now I'm going to play and the sound that we will be hearing should be the bottom track here. Uh, Emily Vidal, also from the production department. And um, last week, uh, we introduced... So both of, um, both Emily and John talking uh, Vidal, is super, is pretty quiet. Um, so I, I probably just wouldn't use that piece of audio. Hi. Uh, Emily Vidal, also from the production department. And um, last week, uh, we... And even though this track, there's a, it's, it's like a, got some kind of weird banging or a little rattly noises. I would still pick this track over the other because um, the dialogue is a lot clearer. If I was really, you know, if this was like a project project that I was really working on, I would probably go back in and find all of the parts where Emily uh, either does an uh or kind of a mouth click um, or even like a little uh, mic bang that uh, John does. I would go in and I would automate that stuff out. So I'm going to try to find one real quick. Last week, uh, we produced a show called Community Hotline, um, and Emily is the producer. Could you tell me a little bit about that show? Well, so uh, it's kind of got a little bang over here. Oh. Well, so I, it's, it's this stuff over here, these little peaks. So I'm just going to scooch when Emily talks over here. Well, uh, and then I'm going to place some keyframes and then 
bring that down but that show well uh, did y'all see how now uh there's no kind of little soft bang tell me a little bit about that show well so that was after i turned it down uh this is before i had turned it down could you tell me a little bit about that show well uh it's like real quiet i'm gonna i'll turn it up so you can so we can it's obvious about that show well uh that little bang the little yeah. like scuff. okay cool so just uh putting some keyframes to edit that out and now it's not there show well okay uh, last so that's what we did in the first clip uh second clip with our new project emily and john uh we noticed that they now both have microphones okay so go over to audio inspector make sure that's open I'm going to go over to my stereo tab here, click my little stereo carrot and uh, select dual mono so that it splits the tracks. So unlike the first uh, clip that we split the tracks for, I'm gonna click on this again. So these two um, waveforms look pretty similar, uh, except that this waveform here is maybe not, the peaks are not as high as the one on top because the one on bottom is the microphone that's uh, farther away from John. If we look at the second clip here, and we compare the two split tracks, it looks significantly different. Like uh, this one, there's all these peaks here. In this same section down here, there are no peaks at all. So we know that these are actually two uh, audio tracks that are uh, significantly different from each other. And we can sa safely assume that it's different dialogue. From the top. Oh. So, Hello, I am Emily Vidal here at Metro East Community Media. Hi, Abigail. Uh, I'm just going to continue rolling with um, where we are here, and then I'll uh, I'll um, I'll come back and talk to you about uh, how we set this particular project up. Okay, so right now what we're just doing is uh, we have a clip selected from our media bin. We opened our audio inspector, and normally when you um, just open the audio inspector, you can see your audio track here, and then there's an option here that says stereo. You want to click that little carrot, and you want to split those two tracks uh, to dual mono. And the reason why we, we want to do that is because we want to have control over uh, dialogue one and dialogue two, because we can tell those are actually two different signals. Um, and right now, what we're trying to do is figure out which one is John and which one is Emily. So like we, uh, like we had kind of played around with before, uh, if I uncheck dialogue two, then this uh, will only play dialogue one. So I'm just going to scrub and try to figure out which, which uh, track belongs to who. So hit play. And today we're going to talk a little bit with John about our production services department. So uh, John, okay, can you so tell that one's Emily. I'm going to uncheck this one, check dialogue two, make sure, just to make sure that that one is Emily. Community Media. And I'm John Lugton from Metro East Community Media. And today we're going to talk a little bit with John about our production services. Department. Okay, great. So, uh, John, can you tell me what is production services here? Um, production services is when... So I know that dialogue two or is or John and dialogue one is Emily. So I'm going to make sure both of these are checked so that when I drag my clip into my timeline and select show audio components, I will have both dialogue and dialogue, dialogue one and dialogue two. If I only had dialogue one checked and I drag my clip into my timeline and I show audio components, um, I only am getting, oh no. Oh, it was both checked. Okay, let me do that again. So if I only, ah, if I only had one of them checked, bring my clip down here and show or expand audio components, I would only get one um, dialogue track. But since I want both, you want both of them checked. Bring it down here. And I'm uh, holding uh, control, clicking the clip to bring this menu up. And then I'm selecting expand audio components. Okay. So how about we have everybody do that first. Uh, go to your media bin, find the clip with both Emily and John, uh, change the uh, configuration from stereo to dual mono. You wanna locate, uh, you wanna figure out which one is John and which one's Emily. And then you drag your clip into the timeline. 
you expand audio components, and then you can start uh, placing your keyframes and editing John and Emily so that you play your audio that they, they are falling between negative six and negative 12. Does that make sense? Okay. Cool. So Abigail, let me get you to where we are. <laughs> um, do you have a, a library called Emily Edits? Oh no, I cannot hear you. My headphones are not working. Um, so yes, I have all of the, the Emily edits, the library and the everything. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't put the two together of the one woman speaking. Um, that's, a, that's okay. Um, hold on one second, let me just cough. <coughs> so um, what we did was we earlier we created um, a library called Emily Edits, and then we had an event called Emily Edits, and then we imported all of this these like these uh, seven pieces of media into that library. So I think you have yeah. these seven pieces in there. So then what we yeah. did was we created a project called Emily Edits, and then in that project we were pretty much just focusing on um, like cutting two different takes together. So we were editing for content. So let's say, you know, somebody was be being interviewed and they had said, you know, they had a better performance say with their statement in one take in the first half, but then with their statement, they made a better performance on the second take. And so we were essentially like editing kind of those two things together. And then mm -hmm. we put some B-roll on. Uh, and then we created another project called Emily Interviews and we kind of played around with audio, like, um, automating audio with keyframes. Are you familiar with keyframes? No, you did that briefly yesterday, right? We did it really briefly yesterday. I'll just kind of, um, I'll go over it really quickly. I just want to um, let you know like what you're looking at here. Um, so essentially what we did was we, we created three different projects within the Emily Edits event okay. because all of these three projects are all using the same uh, media together. So in order to kind of like keep our things organized, we just created a few new projects. And, and the kind of way you can, you can kind of think about this is, let's say we had a, you know, long form documentary called Emily Edits, uh, which is the library name. And then we created an, an event called Emily Edits. And then each of these um, projects could be like Emily interviewing a different person. And then we would have been, uh, that's like one way you could do it, or it could be like different episodes that we're putting together. Because let's say we shot all of our footage in one day and we want to keep it all together. Um, and the way that part of how you keep it all together is by putting it all in the same event. So we created different projects. A, a way that I kind of like to think of projects is like different iterations um, while they are all still sharing the same media or the same assets. So you don't have to be jumping around different libraries to be using the same clips. So that's just kind of what we're looking at right now. Okay, nice. And then, and then the this specific project that we're on is Emily and John. Um, and what we're doing is it's the clip that has both Emily and John holding a microphone. Um, and we're essentially just like identifying whose track is where and then we're going to adjust their volume uh, so that they are as close to level with each other as possible. Okay. Um, I think you had said that you, you have some editing experience. You've A done some bit. editing with before? With Shotcut, it's very hard. Okay. <laughs> That's why I want to do this. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll go over uh, dropping keyframes again. Okay. Um, so before I did all this, um, so with the audio editor, you want to usually, you select your clip. I'm gonna switch this back to stereo because that's how it would look if you hadn't played, if, if you had uh, just like started it up. So you select the clip and then you wanna open it in your audio inspector, which is uh, located up here. Uh, and this is the spot where you can kind of adjust and modify all your audio settings. So you can turn down your volume here. You can turn on uh, an EQ if you want to. 
Um, I, I don't really mess with any of those things. I don't really feel like Final Cut is like a audio editing software, although it has like kind of little band-aids that you can kind of use, um, but it's not like an audio editing software. So I typically don't use the like effects, like the audio effects that they have. Okay, anyway. Uh, so you open the audio inspector, uh, you have your clip here in the audio configuration section, and you want to switch your uh, track here from stereo to dual mono, and you, and you get that by clicking on this little carrot here. And now you have your two audio tracks. Um, you can scrub and preview this just like you can with transitions, effects, and uh, stuff in your media bin. So I'm just going to place my little orange cursor here and then hit uh, space bar on my keyboard um, to listen to the track that's uh, to, to dialogue to. Services here. Um, production services is when a nonprofit. So John sounds pretty clear on that one, and Emily sounds pretty quiet. So that's pretty safe to assume that dialogue two is John. Um, and I'm just going to double check and make sure that dialogue one is Emily. And Sounds today like we're going to talk a little bit. So now that John. we figured out Emily's on one, John's on two, uh, now we can actually start editing. So uh, we grab the clip that we want, drag it into the timeline, and then you want to hold control, click the clip, and then you want to expand audio components. And when we do that, we'll see our two audio tracks uh, under that clip. Boop. Yay. Uh, so we have both of them. So now I'm going to start playing. OK, from the top. Hello, I am Emily Vidal. Cut it from there, please. Hello, I am Emily Vidal here at Metro East Community Media. And I'm John Lugzik. So as I'm playing this, I'm, I'm not really listening. I'm kind of keeping my eye on my audio meter here. I'm, I'm trying to uh, make sure that um, the audio is going between negative six and negative 12. And I'm kind of just making a mental note of where there's like a significant drop because then that's where I will be placing keyframes first. At Metro East Community Media. And I'm John Lugton from Metro East Community Media. And today we're going to talk a little bit with John about our production services department. So uh, John, can you tell me so what is like production services So it looks like John and Emily here? are consistently below negative 12. So I think that it's safe to say that I can just turn uh, their audio up. So what I'd like to do is uh, pl start p placing some keyframes. Uh, let me zoom in and turn this view up a little bit so it's easier to see. OK, so. Um, I'm going to mute John's track because it can be a little distracting for me. And I know John's track is on the bottom here. So I'm going to select his audio track and hit V to mute or to view. Uh, and then I'm going to place my playhead here to where Emily starts talking, hit play. To make sure that's and where today she we're going to talk talking. a little bit with John about our production services department. So uh, John, can you tell me what is production services Okay, so here? I know that's where she ends. So I'm going to drop a keyframe at the end of where she's talking and at the beginning of where she's talking. So, so I have a keyframe at the beginning and at the end, and then let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn her up. So I turn the track up, but oh no, it's, it's not just turning up like that segment that I wanted, it's actually turning that entire track up, which is, which is not what I want. Um, so I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo. So one thing that can be kind of weird about Final Cut, um, but the way that I like to think of it is that you have to put a keyframe that starts and ends the beginning of your automation, and then you need to put a keyframe that starts and ends the ending of your automation. So you will have a total of four keyframes if you uh, do this method of editing. So again, you know, intuitively you would think, oh, I put a keyframe here, at the beginning, I put a keyframe here. At the end, I should just be able to adjust this as a segment, but you can't uh, because it, it moves the entire bar. So you drop a keyframe at the beginning and end of your automation. So this is the beginning and the end of the front half of your automation. And then you want to put keyframes at the beginning and end of your back half of your automation. And then now I can turn this up or turn it down without affecting the rest of the dialogue. So I'm going to turn it up, hit play. And today we're going to talk a little bit with little John bit about loud. our production. She's like hitting zero here, so I got to back this off a little bit. 
Oh, shit. What did I just do? And today we're going to talk a little bit with John about our production right. services department. So, so, yeah, that's what we're doing now. Uh, so I want folks to go uh, and turn or automate Emily's dialogue as well as John's so that they are uh, both getting as close to between negative six and negative 12 as possible. Can you tell me what is production? And at that point, for a production and Announcements. Jessica, yes. Can you can you show me how to put the keyframe in? Like, how do I put that dot in there? Yeah. So you just have to um, you have to make sure that you're hovering over that audio bar. Um, and I don't know if you see, but my mouse kind of turns into this like four like four pointed arrow kind of thing when you hover over the bar and then you can hold down option and then it'll turn into another icon with a little square and then that's when you can start placing keyframes okay. and if you if you need to delete a keyframe you can uh, hold control kick click the keyframe and then select delete keyframe you can also select multiple keyframes by uh, clicking the keyframe holding shift and then you know clicking out clicking however many you want and then you can even delete multiple ones. Oh. Nice. My, I only have a double pointed arrow. I don't see it. Oh, that, that one works too. I think mine is more than two points because I moved mine already. Yeah, the, the two arrows work too. Okay. As long as uh, you're hovering over the audio bar and you hold option, uh, and then you should see like a little arrow with a little diamond. Okay. Great, thank you. Yeah.
We'll spend like maybe five more minutes doing this. Hello, I am Emily Vidal here at Metro East Community Media. And I'm John Lugton from Metro East Community Media. And sorry, I forgot that I was screen sharing the audio too, sorry. Hey, Jessica. I mean, Jessica. Uh, Jay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, somehow I got rid of my little meters on the side there. What did I have to click to get those back up? Yes. So you go to window, window. and then you want to okay. go to show in workspace and then it is uh, audio, audio meters. Okay. Something tells me I'll be watching this tape again. That's okay. That's why it's recorded. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn, for editing it. <laughs> okay. Um, does everybody feel, are they feeling comfortable with placing keyframes? Sorta? Abigail, can you screen share? Uh, I can't even, I can't figure out how to show the window. So I'm kind of behind. That's okay. Which window? Uh, or the one showing where the volume is going up and down? Yeah. So that window is the audio inspector and it's located. Um, so this whole, oh, I'm not screen sharing. Am I? Oop, sorry. Okay, let me do that. Okay. So this whole um, kind of panel over here on the right-hand side is called the inspector. 
And the inspector allows you to adjust many things. There's like, there's a color inspector, there's a film strip inspector, there's a text inspector, and there's an audio inspector. So uh, we click on the little audio icon and that, uh, I'm gonna switch this back to stereo because that's what it would look like uh, before we had changed anything. So this is what it should look like if you just click on the clip, uh, oh, sorry, click on the clip and then open your audio inspector. This is what it, sh what it should look like. Hmm. And then from here, you can click on stereo and switch it to dual mono. For some reason, mine isn't showing that little. This? The, the scale on the far right bottom. This here? You can actually annotate. Um, if you can control my screen, do you know how to use the annotate function on Zoom? Um, no. If you click on a uh, screen share, I think there might be an option to annotate. Okay, that would stop your screen sharing though? No, it allows you to draw on my screen. Yeah, uh, uh, another way, uh, if you look at the top where it says you were viewing Jessica Lou's screen, if you click on view options, oh, yeah. you can click uh, annotate, which is, um, around There's the Abigail. Oh, this thing. You, yeah. you can't find that thing. Okay, great. So that thing is Windows. As so you go to the Window tab, okay. Go, go to Workspace. Uh, show in Workspace Audio Meter. Show in Workspace Audio Meter. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Sorry, I totally missed. Cool. I know it, a new about. Zoom function. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was actually like, it's pretty handy. <laughs> this might actually work. <laughs> And if you ever get to a place where, you know, like maybe you accidentally click, kick, kicked, clicked around a bunch and then you click back on your project and you're like, oh my gosh, where did all my automation go? I can't see any of that. Uh, you just need to uh, click uh, control and just show your, um, expand your audio components again. And then you, oh, do I not have automation on here? You should just see it. Do I delete it? I don't know what happened. Okay, sorry, I just lied to everybody. Yeah. Hmm? Huh? Oh, I thought I had automation on here. Hmm. Glenn, do you know what happened? I, I feel like you, usually if like you just need to expand audio components. But I don't know where all my automation went. Um, hmm. It's okay. I'm not sure. I don't think I was looking at the right time. That's okay. I probably, I was just like madly clicking. I may have deleted it all. Okay, anyway, um, so did everybody, uh, everyone feels good, comfortable with uh, keyframes? What else? Um, so we went over, oh yeah, I'll just go over uh, generators. Uh, they are very similar to text. Um, so next to your text, uh, so actually, before we move on, does anybody have any other questions about audio editing or dialogue editing? Okay, great. So moving on from the audio editing part of it, uh, I'm just gonna go to touch on um, generators and text a little bit. So generators, um, generators are kind of like little textured animations. Um, I really like them. Like, uh, so when I first started editing, I was doing a lot of like music video type things. And so the, having these kind of like animated texture kind of things um, is really handy. Um, and you can use them for like solely just for texture or you can use them for like as uh, intro and end cards for your video. Um, so the R1 sounds, they're not always animated, but um, I think these ones are. So and you can preview them here. So I'm scrubbing. 
this is the one I always pick because it's super obvious. I like these clouds too, I think they're cute. So with backgrounds, um, same as a text object, or sorry, with generators, same as a text object, you can either put uh, a generator before a clip. So I'm putting this before my clip and I'm gonna hit play so we can see what's going on. Okay, from the top. Hello, I am Emily Vidal here at Metro. So that one was just some Media. clouds, some nice happy clouds. Um, you can put your generator on top of a clip. Uh, and of course, because in Final Cut, it prioritizes uh, videos that are sitting on top, it, uh, it's going to play the clouds first. Hello, I am Emily Vidal here at Metro. And East the clouds kind of have this like uh, attribute to them that kind of gives them that kind of hazy look. You can adjust here in our inspector, because remember, any of the stuff that we want to adjust or that we are allowed to adjust, we'll be able to find in the inspector. Uh, so here is the generator inspector that I have uh, selected. So I can uh, add to the cloud density. I can uh, subtract from the cloud density. I can uh, kind of change the angle of the tracking of my clouds. I can change the, 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 the oh, this is actually the lens, sorry, tracking of the lens. I could change the position of the dolly. I can kind of, you know, determine how hazy it is. All this good stuff, all these kind of things that are very specific to um, my cloud generator. So some other cool stuff um, that we didn't really go over is some like basic animating. Um, so what I like to do, well, let me see, is this the best way to do it? Sure, we'll, we'll just do that. Um, okay, let me bring, these, bring this to zero here and make this normal. Okay, so let's say we wanted this generator track to start off with no clouds. Um, and then by the time it reached the end of the clip, we want it to be full on like cloud party happening in this shot. Um, so what we're gonna do is use keyframes to animate that. Um, so what, uh, again, I think it's always very important to make sure that the playhead is actually, um, you know, in the time uh, of, of like the animation that you're trying to create. So for example, if at the beginning of our um, cloud animation, we want no clouds at all, I'm going to put my playhead at the top or at the beginning of my generator object. I'm gonna click this little, um, on the right hand side on the inspector here, there's a little like diamond with the plus on it. I'm gonna click it and then it's gonna turn yellow. So boop, turned yellow. Uh, indicating to me that this keyframe has now been placed uh, and now I can place my next one. So as I move my uh, playhead over towards the end, I'm going to, I'm going to say, you know, like an aesthetic choice here. I want to have a full cloud party happening by the time I get uh, to, you know, the 11th frame or 11th sec, 11th frame of my uh, intro here. So uh, notice this icon has changed. It looks a little different. It looks like a little um, diamond with a little arrow in it, uh, which means like, oh, you have already placed uh, a keyframe. So I'm going to now turn the clouds from zero to full cloud party over here, uh, and then make sure that there's a keyframe placed here. And then now what I'm gonna do is move my playhead and kind of like scrub it back and forth on my object to make sure that I have my animation. So I should have no clouds up here in the front. And as I, dra as I drag my playhead, I should have the cloud party coming in here. And I'm gonna hit play just to see. No clouds. All right, now it's popping. Now the DJs come and now everybody's having a dance party with the clouds. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> does, does, did you have a question? Oh, I thought somebody had a question. Oh, I think that was Emily that said, okay. I thought somebody here said, okay. Mm. 
All right, so yeah, does that make sense for folks using these little uh, keyframes here on the side? I would like, I would ask you to pick a generator that has like an easy animation that you can see like the clouds and then try doing this. So try, you know, um, explore some of the parameters of the generator that you've picked. So for this instance, I picked my clouds and then I did an easy animation. I was like, okay, the beginning of this uh, object, I wanted to have nothing there. And then by, by the end, I want it to be, you know, populated with all of these objects. And the way that I did that was, you know, you select your object, you move the playhead at the front, you place a keyframe. Uh, so this is like where you want your animation to start. And I said, okay, I clicked this. I want my animation to, st to start here with no clouds. So I turned my cloud meter all the way down. I moved my playhead to where I want to have my full cloud party, uh, place a keyframe, and then like turn my cloud party up all the way. And then, um, test it out by rolling it back and hitting play. And sometimes it can get really confused, like frustrating, and it might take uh, several experiments and a bunch of kind of playing around to um, use these keyframes in a way that makes it look smooth. So we'll sp spend about um, five or eight, let's do five to 10 minutes, because I feel like there's a lot of um, generators that people can be looking through. You can also do the same type of um, animation kind of method with effects. So let's say you have, oh, I'm gonna try to not preview any effects because every time I preview an effect, it crashes on me. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing with, I'm gonna try to find an effect that's super obvious. Um, with this, uh, it crashed. Anyway, I was just going to show you that it's the same thing um, with the effects. You select your effect, you drag it um, either, you know, on top of the clip that you wanted to affect or, you know, in between. You select the, the effect object. Um, beep. I'm going to go to here. Ah. Uh, I'm like scared. I'm scared now to, to go in here. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna grab one real quick. So I don't even know what I grabbed. I grabbed the black and white one. Great. Um, I'm just gonna make a, a blade incision here because I don't want. You're this not effect. screen sharing. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so the same thing with uh, animating keyframes in effects. Uh, so I just dropped a black and white effect into this uh, clip here. Uh, I'm going to go over to um, my film strip inspector, make sure that it's turned on. I'm going to make sure that my playhead is actually positioned on the clip that I want to manipulate. Uh, and then I'm going to say like, okay, I think it'll be super cool if um, it starts off with black and white and then like, turns back into color. Maybe I'll like make a little incision here and put like a fun little circle or old timey transition. So, um, oh actually, so I'm gonna have it be black and white. Starting here, I'm going to place my keyframes. And then as it moves to like here, I'll reduce my black and white so that it's all the way back to color. And then I'm going to roll my playhead back. And you can actually see as I'm dragging my playhead across the timeline, you can see that effect happening in reverse. I'm, I'm Emily play. Vidal here at Metro East Community Media. And I'm John Lugton from Metro East Community Media. And today we're going to talk a little bit with... Wow, this is really loud. Yeah, and uh, now we can see that as the clip is playing, the color is slowly being mixed back into um, the video. So I am Emily so Vidal here. I'm just going to mute these. So it starts off as black and white because that's how I applied the effect. And I placed my keyframes down when the effect was like 100% or 50 over here. And then as it plays, once it gets to over here, and you can see like, can see if you have the uh, 
in the inspector area, as I'm dragging my playhead across the timeline, you can see the amount and brightness values changing. And what I'm essentially doing is just uh, we're previewing and we're watching that animation happen. So spend some time, play around with uh, dropping keyframes. Maybe if you find an effect that you like that has like a cool blur, uh, go into its inspector and um, play around with the blur angle and maybe animate the blur angle or the blur radius. I just pick colory based things because it's easy for me to see. Cloud party. So Jessica. Yeah. All right. So I'm having a hard time seeing this. Where when you're dropping the keyframes on the animation, I can't so see that. So you don't actually see it. You kind of oh, have okay. to Yeah, you kind of just have to like know in your head, like, oh, my playhead was earlier here, and that's when I clicked on the animation, and then you can kind of like scoot the playhead over and then click the button again to drop another animation. If you're like totally lost and you're just like i have no idea what i've placed where and i just want to reset everything uh you can do that by is it this one oh. it's the little um the arrow. Arrow. Yeah. this one right yeah the, the little yeah okay so i was like why is it not working uh to the right of the um little square keyframe there's like a little curly arrow and that's to reset all of your keyframes okay well so when you say click the button you talk about clicking on the mouse no there's um if you look at my screen there's like a you see this little like curly arrow let me drop it i can't even see your cursor where you oh okay there you're down up there. here so there's this one is what we click to uh add and subtract keyframes and then this one actually lets us jump to the next one or back from the, uh, the previous one. Do, do y'all see that? Um, so I'm clicking like these two little icons. And if you look at my timeline while I'm clicking at, on these two little icons, my playhead is jumping between two points. Do y'all see that? Um, I mean, my thing's not big enough because I mean I see it moving back and forth between that little arrow and that little icon there. Do you see? Look at the timeline as I'm clicking between these two. Do you see the playhead okay. jumping around? Yeah. So that playhead is jumping back and forth between the uh, keyframes that I have placed there. And it's just jumping back and back and forth between it. It'll, it will just cycle. So it's only jumping back and forth between the two because I've only placed two keyframes there right now. If I had placed six, it would just cycle between the six of them. And that's kind of how you can see where your keyframes are. Okay, um, how are people feeling about placing keyframes for animating, or so for automating audio, for kind of doing simple animations? Feel good, people feel good about text? Okay, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of anything else we need to cover. Abigail, if you can stay a little bit later, we can go over, because I don't think you were here when we went over text. Okay, cool. Um, what else? Oh yeah, in, uh, exporting, I guess we'll just go over that very quickly. Um, the important thing, how to get your dang project out. Um, so to, it's super simple. It's like the easiest thing in this whole case. 
um, you go to file and then you go to share and then you go to uh, I, I do master file I guess you can go to YouTube or prepare for Facebook or Vimeo but because you never know like who was using that computer last I just go to master um, and uh, you would click on this and then this you can kind of tell uh, go in the settings here and kind of uh, choose where you want it to go right maybe not in settings in the next one yeah and then you can try to choose where it, uh, where to send it uh, you can put send it to your movies or your desktop or wherever you know that you're going to be able to find it and then you can go ahead and hit save uh, and then when you do once it's saved then you can go ahead and take your file and upload it to your preferred social media platform. Yes. Am I missing anything, Glenn? Uh, no, I think that's it. I think that's it. All righty. Uh, if folks don't have any other questions, uh, then you are free. You are released to go. Yay, graduated. <laughs> I highly, highly recommend you take advanced editing because Lauren knows everything about most things like video media related um, and he'll show you all the like fun tips and tricks. <laughs>